Tonight's tea is going to be a risotto. I haven't made a risotto for ages. So, I'm going to do a risotto. Hopefully it won't be as frantic as last night's tea, which was the um, Misu Raymond. <laughs> so, it'll be a bit more calmer tonight, hopefully. So, it's going to be a chicken and bacon risotto. So, I have got rather a lot of stock. Three pints. This is for four people. So, I know there's only two of us, but we're not going to eat enough for four people tonight. I'm making enough um, for tomorrow for lunch, so we can take it for work. So, in that three pints of boiling water, I have lost what I put in there. Where's it gone? What have you done with it? What's here? Oh, sorry about that. Good start, isn't it? Um, vegetable stock pot. Now I put two of these in because um, it's such a lot of water. I think if you didn't put um, two in, you wouldn't really taste it. So you want a bit of flavour from that. So I put two in. I have spray lighted my big pan. I have chopped um, my chicken into bite sized pieces. And I have taken off as much fat as I can of my back bacon. I've chopped a red onion and mushrooms. I've got four cloves of garlic ready. And I've got 300 grams of risotto rice. It must be risotto rice. You can't use pilaf or um, boiled rice or anything like that. It's got to be risotto rice because um, as you add the stock, it gets creamier. And um, you won't get that from normal rice. So you do need to purchase some risotto rice for this. All right. I have got a little bit of cheese, which is not in the... Um, the recipe but neither are I haven't got any leeks and there's leeks in the recipe so I mean you can adapt these things I've got no saffron either <laughs> but I don't care if mine's not yellow so it's yellow in the book the only thing saffron does is makes it yellow so it's not really enhancing any flavour so we're having white risotto there's nothing wrong with that I'm quite happy with white risotto so this is from the Free Food Feast Slimming World book on page 90, if you're interested. And I am going to begin by heating my pan. So yes, I'm going to use a little bit of cheese and I'm going to grate it on the fine grater uh, so that it goes a little bit further in my eyes. Right, so just to clear up. Got my pan on. Well, we'll have. Got my pan on. I'm going to do my bacon, my chicken, my onions, my mushrooms, and then I will add the rice, and then I will start adding the stock. So, heat the pan up, get the chicken in, and we'll begin. Let me get a, um, I need to use, should I use that one? I could use this one. I'm trying to cut down how much washing up I cause. <laughs> See, look, I'm going to use that one out of my stock instead of getting another clean one right so I shall come back in a minute when that's got hot enough right so my chicken is in Ooh, I better move that stock out of the way I? so I've got my chicken in I'm going to give that a bit of a stir a couple of people have asked me about my dog there she is there you are, aren't you? You good girl. <laughs> she was seven the day after Boxing Day. We've had her since she was 13 weeks old as a, a baby. And we got her from Dog Rescue. And um, I let my husband name her. My husband likes F1. She's called Kimmy. So every time he's watching F1 and shouting at Kimmy, poor old Kimmy gets all confused. Hey darling, yes. And she thinks that um, it's her that's being shouted at, so I have to tell him off to stop shouting at her, don't we? Yes. So anyway, she is an English bull cross with a lasso apsu. <laughs> and you. So an English bull is one of those, you know, with a Roman nose, bless them. And she does look sometimes, and I think, oh, yeah, I can really see that. English bull in her, um, but she gets really um, curly coat. 
and occasionally I will um, give her a clip, bless her, and she ends up looking like a blooming poor old lamb out of the field. So anyway, we've had her a while. She's very good. She has her moments, you know. But she, she's pretty good. She's a good scrounger. She's like this, watching to see if I'm dropping stuff on the floor. <laughs> she's there like a flash, picking it up. So, that's my chicken on the go. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Number four. And I'm going to add my onion. Now, if you want to use leeks, I think the recipe says a couple of leeks. Just slice them up and use leeks. Um, but I didn't have any, so I've just used onions. <laughs> so I've got my bacon in now. So at the moment, I've got bacon, chicken and red onion in there. Cooking away. And I've got it on number five on the hob, obviously. It was a stupid thing to say, wasn't it? And I'm making a mess, as per usual. Put it back in. Right, so I'm going to now make a little room. I'm going to add my mushrooms. Oh, there's a bit of bacon now, look. You like mushrooms, don't you? A little bit. Right. Hopefully this all fits in this darn pan because it's the biggest one I've got. I might just chop these, <laughs> sort of mush them up a bit, make them a bit smaller. I know mushrooms go down to not a lot, so but I'll just give them a little helping hand. Otherwise I'm not going to have enough room in the blooming pan. There we go. So give that a mash, a mash, a mix. Together. And then what I'm going to do is add my garlic and I'm going to put a bit of pepper in. It's not coming out that well, so it looks like I'm putting a lot in, but I'm not. It's just a bit, it's like really big, coarse pepper. And it, to come out of that is difficult. <laughs> right, so garlic. I got four. We do like a bit of garlic in our house. So I mean if you don't like garlic then don't put it in. It's not in the it's not in the recipe. I'm putting it in because I like it, so but if you don't like it then leave it out. Here's the other one. Right, let's give that a bit of a stir around. Then I'm going to start adding my stock in a minute after I've added my risotto rice, that is. So, that'll do. Oh, you can smell that garlic, that smells nice. If my dad, husband had his way, he'd have chilli in this as well, because oh, he loves chilli, he'd have chilli in everything, but there are limits. Mm. Right, so, this is my 300 grams of rice, gone in. Give it a skirt, stir. You want it a, a little bit coated with the juices and... Um, that's come out of the bacon and the um, the chicken. So let all the, the little ricey things get a little coating. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cook this on simmer. So I'm going to turn it down to about three. I might turn it even lower. At the moment I'm keeping it on three. Can you see? Yeah. And... I'm going to start adding my stock. That looks a lot of stock. Three pints. But it will get absorbed. So I've put about that much in. Can you see? In 
to here give it a little stir now you do the reason why I don't have uh, risotto that often is because I'm so impatient and you need a bit of patience with risotto you've got to look after it <laughs> you've got, it's no good doing anything else you've got to stand it and you've got to not not all the time but for 25 minutes you've got to give it a bit of loving care <laughs> and you've got to periodically stir it because while you're stirring it you're releasing all that creaminess out of the ris out of the rice so but don't fiddle <laughs> so there's a balance you need that balance <laughs> stirring nicely and not fiddling that's the balance if you get that you'll have a nice risotto so there we go i'm going to just bring it up to number four because that stock has only just gone in there you know what it's like it needs to get up to temperature of the rest of the stuff that's in there so once it's bubbling away quite nicely i will then turn it back down to three and then um, continue so that's all you do you you just as that water all gets absorbed you then add some more then you cook it down once that's absorbed you add some more water cook it down and so on and that's how you need the patience to do this recipe <laughs> hopefully i will have the patience i will i will it'll be good so i'm going to leave you now for a little while because um there's not a lot to say it's a bit boring isn't it and i'll come back in a minute all right I'm getting bored. <laughs> <coughs> I've used that much. And it's looking like that. I think I'm going to be able to feed the street. That's a lot of food. So I'm going to keep going. But I am getting a bit bored. So I'm thinking, oh, come on. But you can't rush these things, can you? Mm. but I'm going to keep keep going because that's all I can do so just keep occasionally stirring it and then adding more stock and it is slowly getting absorbed um, the rice is getting bigger um, if I get that's can you, oh god can you see that's an uncooked grain there I'm not showing this very well am I and that's the cooked grains so they pretty much if I put that one there can you see the difference <laughs> there between the uncooked and the cooked it's probably doubled in size hasn't it yeah so it's, it's coming on but like I said you have to be a bit patient so, but, and you also, you have to be patient, but you have to sort of stay near it so that you can give it the attention that it shouts out for. I might make something else while I'm studying. <laughs> oh, I do want to make these actually. I saw these today. I want to make some Slimming World brownies. They're half a sin each. And they've got um, three eggs. Uh, vanilla, cocoa and sweetener and you separate your eggs, whisk them up and then into your yolks you combine the sweetener, cocoa and vanilla and then you add your egg whites and then you divide between 12 cases in an oven at 180 for 15 minutes and that makes brownies apparently. I was thinking though if you had because I don't think they're going to be big. Because all that mixture between 12, they're not going to be massive, are they? So I'm thinking maybe you get some quark and you get two. And then you put some quark in between the two. And you have them like, um, what are they called? A whoop? Is it a whoopee? Is it a whoopee? I don't know. Um, yeah, so it's like a big, more like a, biscuity thing with the quark in the middle it's making my mouth water <laughs> I might make those but I've got no quark so I can't do it so if I make them they've got to be little single ones 
and I think I want to make double ones, double deckers. <laughs> I'll have to see. I'll think about it. I've talked myself into it. Normally, when I do things like this, they turn into a disaster. <laughs> when I don't plan to do things, I just do them on the hop. It normally turns into a disaster, and I think to myself, oh my god, why did I even start this? But I'm going to. I'm going to have a go. So I'm just giving the food mountain a mix, and I'm going to add some more stock. We are getting there, look. Nearly. So, give it another stir. Right, so I've got three eggs and I've got my um, thing out and I'm going to crack in my egg yolk. <coughs> I'm going to take that off a minute. I can't do it with that on. Let's take those out of there. So, I'm going to in my mixer I'm going to separate my three eggs and put my whites into the mixer. Do you know I keep thinking I'll get one of those blimmin separator things, you know the little plasticky things? I never get one. And then when it comes to doing stuff like this I think oh I wish I had one of those plasticky things. I'm too tight because I'm in the shop and I'm thinking, I'm not spending £3 on one of those, I can do it myself. <laughs> oh. Right, so, last one. does need to be a clean, grease-proof bowl that you use. And you mustn't get any of the egg yolk in there because it really won't work. It really won't work if you do that, which I just nearly did. Alright, we're done. In. Oh, it's like snot, isn't it? Oh, God. Oh, right, let's get rid of that. Oh, it's like a snotty kid. It's like a snotty kid, isn't it? <laughs> right, let's shut some doors. It's like Woolworths. Right, so I'm going to put this on, give it a whiz, and get some soft peaks performing. I'll turn you off in a minute, I think. I have my soft peaks. So, there's my soft peaks. See it? Okay. So, what I now have to do is get rid of this. Oh. Put that down. And then, what I need is my eggs. And I need to add to my eggs 30 grams of cocoa. So if I stand that on there, I've got my oven on at 180. There we go. Right, I've got my cocoa. And I'm going to add my 30 grams. God. I've got the most, <laughs> the most awkward box. Oh, lordy. Making a lovely mess. Now I've got too much. I've got to try and put some back. Oh, grief. There we go. Oh, right. Hang on. So that's my cocoa. Then I need 35 grams of sweetener. a lot. Oh my god, really? I'm putting 20. And a teaspoon of vanilla. Right. 
then you have to mix this together. Apparently, it can be quite difficult to do it. Let me just do this first. This is getting there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, come on. Right, I need to turn this down a bit. I've got it on two now. This is nearly ready. Still got a little bit more. I don't think it's going to take all this water stock. Right, I, I think that's the last little bit. You can tell, it's like really swollen, you know, swollen, 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 whatever the word is. I don't think that's going to take any more water. So, that's my last bit. Oh my God, what a mess. Oh, right, so, let's get through this. So, I'm mixing this... To a bit of a paste and it says as it gets um, harder to mix start incorporating um, some of the meringue so keep mixing it it's quite dry Lordy. So I'm going to put some in now. Hopefully that will help to loosen it. Oh my days. using all my utensils. I lied. Right. Try a wooden spoon. Maybe it's because I haven't got enough of that so I didn't use all the sugar. Would that make a difference? You know, it's coming. It's coming. You need a bit of elbow grease. Good old fashioned elbow grease. Right. Can you see that? Yeah. And what they did was once they'd mixed a couple of spoonfuls in. Because I'm aware that I'm sort of knocking out the air by doing this. Then what they did was they just combined it within the rest once you've got it a bit looser. So once you've got this one going, you can then fold this in with the remaining... Yeah, it's, it's loosening. It's just that first one, it's, it is a little difficult. It's getting better. Can you see that? Right, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to pop that in with the remaining meringue. like so and then I'm going to try and gently combine that without knocking out the rest of the air from that meringue can you see
You want it all mixed in though. Oh, my arm. All this blooming stirring. Oh. Right, my risotto is ready. What I'm going to do is just turn that off because it'll be right for a bit. Because now I'm preoccupied with this. <laughs> oh. See, this is when you know you think, oh, why? Why, why, why? Right, done. Mess. Get rid of that. Oh. Just wash my hands. Do you know, I'm so glad I've got a dishwasher. <laughs> right, so. Make some space. Just where so you can't see that side of the kitchen. Looks like a darn bomb's hit it. Ooh. That's a bit of an error, isn't it? I was going to put them in here. I made some chocolate cupcakes and they're still in them. So I haven't got enough. Because they're still in there. I haven't been eaten. Oh. Right. God, I think there might be a couple in here. There's two. Honestly, Kimmy, hey? What's it all about? Hey? Nightmare. It's all good. Got some cases. Right. So get a tray. 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 Haven't got a tray. Pizza tray. That'll do. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, these are big ones. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good. They're a bit big, my cases. I am going to give these cases a bit of a quick spritz. Oh, fancy forgetting about those blooming cases having ruddy cakes in them. Honestly. It's all your fault, isn't it? It's all your fault. Right. Use one of these. Now you need to divide this mixture between these 12 cases. So there goes. See, these are just too big and they're just going to look pathetic. And then they go in the oven. But I am putting a little bit more in these big ones, I must admit. Um, 180 for 15 minutes. And the kit. So, get these finished. But I do quite like the idea of them being um, doubled up. And if they say they're only half a sin each, you know, they're still only going to be one blooming sin, aren't they? There is enough actually, it's quite surprising. I'm using a dessert spoon. And, um, it does appear to be, I mean they're not filling right up, they're just like, a quarter full, so. So I'm just finishing off some that aren't quite as full as others. Oh, I don't know. Chuck it in there. Right, so. Ugh. 
Now they're going in. Right, 15 minutes, 180. Middle, middle shelf. Oh, God. Right, risotto. How do you know when a risotto is cooked? Well, A, you cook it for long enough. This has taken longer than it says in the book. Now, I do find that with Slim, the Slimming World books. I think they're a bit under estimating in how long um, some of their recipes cook for. Now, it said 25 minutes. I always think with a good risotto, you need to cook it for at least 35 to 40 minutes, personally. Um, yeah, a risotto rice should be... Squishy, like that. Mm. But it's got, it's still holding the rice, but it's um, it's nice and very nice and soft. Another way to test if a risotto is cooked is, oh sorry, by. I don't think you can see it on here because there's so much in it. I'll put some in here, and then you can see. When you pull, another clean spoon <laughs> through your risotto, it parts. Can you see that? But it, it's holding, so there's not loads of excess fluid, uh, liquid, um, in between. There's a nice parting of the rice. Um, it's not dry. It's still very moist, but it's not sloppy, really sloppy and wet. I'll try and show you in the pan if I can. So darn heavy. So when I pull the thing through, it's going back, but slowly. Do you see what I mean? I hope you understand what I mean. It's a bit difficult to explain. So, to finish off, I'm just going to pop that back in there because I want to add some... Um, I tell you it would look nice in here because it's very beige looking. That's because I haven't got the saffron. So I've got some coriander which I'm going to chop. Um, it would have been nice, um, you could have put some um, peas in there, some frozen peas. That would have been quite nice. I'm just turning my board over. Covered in blooming chocolate. So... I'm just going to chop a little bit of, take some of this, some of this not great, get rid of that. So I'm just going to chop up some coriander. The best way to do this is to get your knife, hold it on the top and rock it like that. And you get a nice fine, you pull it back to yourself, you get a nice fine chop. It just chops it really nicely and quite finely. Rather than trying to drag it through like that, it just doesn't like it. It, it doesn't work. So, just gently, you probably know this already. I'm telling you how to suck eggs, aren't I? There we go. Done. So I'm going to add that. doing all this cooking but it's all the blooming tidying up isn't it oh right so I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper I should be glad to get new pepper I'm gonna get a grinding one why is this darn useless it because of the bacon so I don't think it really needs my husband doesn't like a lot of salt in his cooking his food so um, you know if you want to add it you can but um, I don't think it warrants it really with the bacon so there we go that's giving it a bit of green I'll plate some up so you can see a 
chicken and bacon and mushroom risotto. So yeah, let's give it a try. It's going to be a bit hot, so bear with me. Get a little bit of um, chicken, a little bit of bacon and some mushroom. Mmm, I forgot something. So, just a tiny sprinkling of cheese. Yeah, nice. Right, well, I'll have another try. Mmm, lovely. Oh, my God. Oh, it's very nice, though. I tell you what I did forget to do. Put the damn timer on these brownies. <laughs> No idea how long they've been in there. God. But risotto is very nice. I shall eat that in a minute. Right. Let's have a look. Oh, no, they're not ready yet. I shall come back in a minute when I've had a bit of a tidy up and I'll show you the brownies. Now that's cooled down a bit, I can taste it properly. <laughs> it's really creamy and really tasty. Um, it's nice with the herbs in and that little bit of cheese just sort of lifts it um but with the, the mushrooms it's really they're really kept their juiciness they haven't dried out at all or anything and the rice is very very creamy and um mm, very nice you won't be disappointed no definitely not mm. and that stock has given it a real flavor um it's not overly garlicky it's a very nice dish it would make a lovely um, if you have people coming around for dinner, um, it would um, be lovely with a, um, a nice green salad or something. It would be very nice. Hmm. So, these have come out. The chocolate things, brownies. When they come out, they were quite high and they have gone flat. <laughs> they dropped. So, I'm just letting them, to, I'm letting them um, cool down and then I'm going to see... I'll just take one out. See, like, looks like a little, like a little biscuit. So that's what makes me think it'd be nice if you had two with a bit of something inside. So, yeah, I'll try that in a minute. I'll come back. Right, so I've just got rid of the risotto for 5,000 people. And I have my brownies. They've come out and they look like that. What I'm going to do is get... My God, Easy Yo Yogurt. I have a recipe on this. <laughs> Which is um, Greek, um, fat-free Greek yogurt. And I'm gonna get one of these whoopies, I keep wanting to call them, brownies. And ordinarily, I would say use quark, but this is quite thick, so I reckon it might work. And then get another one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that. How lovely does that look? Looks good, doesn't it? I'm going to give it a try. Right. I'm going to do it off camera because it's going to be messy. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that is real, real chocolate. That's lovely. I don't think it needed all that sugar in that they were saying. 35 grams, 20 grams was more than enough. It's just nice and sweet. It's not overly sweet. It's got a lovely chocolate hit. And I think it does nice with the yogurt, actually. I mean, you could eat them on their own. Equally, they're just as nice as one sin to have a proper proper one. You can have a sin, have a proper sin. <laughs> anyway, give these a go. They're well worth it. They didn't take long to make. I know it was a bit of a faff trying to get the mix to um, combine to start with, but um, we got there. 
Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed <laughs> Tuesday night tea and um, brownies, all a bit random. And um, yeah, not sure what we're having tomorrow night, so um, we'll have to wait and see. But if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Check out all my other um, videos. I've got about 40 on there now. I'm a bit obsessed with it at the moment. And um, yeah, subscribe. That'd be great. And uh, press the little bell. And then when I do put them on, which I put on daily at the moment, I'm a bit, like I said, I'm a bit obsessed, um, you'll get a little notification to tell you that there's a new video to be watched. So have a lovely evening. And um, I'll speak soon. Bye then.